Well, there are many tricks, many temptations in the world, but today we're going to talk about the one demon that I think is the most dangerous for devout Christians. Welcome back to the Faith of the Fathers podcast. I'm your host, Carl Gessler, here to reignite the faith of the fathers. What is the most dangerous spirit, evil spirit, for Christians who are devout? I believe it is the spirit of religion. Um, And I know even as I say that, religious people are going to quote to me James 1.27, which says, Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So religion is important. So uh, when I say that a spirit of religion is dangerous, a lot of people are going to object to that, uh, saying, no, there, you know, religion is good. As a matter of fact, I was praying with someone who uh, had a spirit of religion, and when I had her renounce it, she stumbled over it for that very reason, saying, like, well, isn't religion good? So what is religion, and is it good? Religion is simply a worldview. Uh, so the way you world, uh, the way you view the world, just as that word uh, sounds. Uh, so every single person in, on the planet has a worldview. You cannot have a consciousness without having a worldview. Just your worldview is um, how you understand the world to function, where you find meaning, where you what you believe to be true. Everybody has a worldview. So religion is everybody has a religion. Atheists are some of the most religious people on the planet. They're always talking about their worldview. They're always mocking the God that they say they don't believe in. And by that, they're trying to advocate for their own worldview, So, um, which is one of meaninglessness or one of survival of the fittest, whatever it is. They advocate their worldview. Uh, they're promoting their religion all the time. So everybody is religious. Um, so there's only one true religion. Uh, and it's very precise, very exact. Jesus says it's very narrow. Um, and so uh, he said that you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Anything that's not of the truth is a lie and is going to cause us problems. Lies are open doors for spirits. So a spirit of religion is simply a spirit that enters our life because of a lie that we believe based on a worldview that we hold to be true, but is not. And that happens a lot in religious circles. There are traps uh, that the enemy sets for people who want to do the right thing. Um, And uh, this is uh, what we want to talk about today, because many people fall into this trap, um, and uh, it destroys destroys, um, relationships, it destroys evangelism, it destroys love, it destroys joy. So we want to set the captives free today, those who have been bound by the spirit of religion. Why do you want religion at all? That's a very important question. Why do you want a worldview? Uh, a lot of times we don't really know why we want things. We never stop to articulate it. We never stop to think about it, which is why it's so important to get up in the morning, to have some quiet time, read the scriptures, pray, talk to the Lord, work out the thoughts of your heart, the emotions that you're feeling. They're there for a reason. Um, and if you'll spend the time to kind of work through them, you will know the truth, as Jesus said, and the truth will set you free. That is the very reason I believe that we should want a true, the true religion, is because we want to be free. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We live in a world that is confusing. We're hearing lots of information. We're hearing lots of messages day in and day out. We're having lots of different experiences. Relationally, people are telling us different things, communicating to us different things uh, through the way they interact with us. You know, you heard messages from your parents, even if they got divorced, you heard the message um, that life is very hard and sometimes we need to quit. You heard the message, um, I'm unhappy, and 
the reason is because I'm in a family. So you receive this message that I'm the problem because mom and dad couldn't hold it together because I was very difficult to live with. We all have these messages, different messages that we're hearing every day. You hear, If you watch the news or what they call the news, if you watch mainstream media, if you watch TV, CNN and all that stuff, you're going to hear all sorts of messages about how uh, humans, white people, whatever it is, are causing the problems in the world. Um, you know, that weather, uh, that there's global warming um, and we're, we're all going to die if we don't stop using plastic or whatever, whatever the message is. We're hearing all this information shoved at us about how the world functions and how we relate to it. And so um, we want religion because religion or a worldview makes sense or, or at least attempts to make sense of the world that we're living in. And it's only by having a roadmap that we can find where we are on this map and what we're supposed to be doing. And so peace comes from knowing who we are, knowing where we are, what we're called to, what we're called to do. That's how we know how to be successful. That's how we know um, how to find fulfillment. That's how we know we are loved. And this is what we're after with religion. So a spirit of religion is something that comes into our life and tells us lies about how we are uh, how we find peace with God, how we know we are loved. Um, and so we want to address that today. So we want religion, but it's only there's only one true religion, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So if you are walking in freedom, you know you're walking in the truth. If you're walking in bondage, you know that there's a lie in your life, maybe many lies, maybe one lie, but it's there, and it's stealing your freedom. Um, so we want to address that today. So um, I talked recently on this podcast about the spirit of rejection, which I've prayed with many, many people now, and I have yet to meet a single person, and I believe I never will, uh, who doesn't struggle with the issue of rejection. And that's because all have sinned, as the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we have all hurt other people and so we have all been hurt. And in that hurt, we have felt rejection. We have been wounded. Uh, that is what sin does. It wounds. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And any time we listen to him, which is what the Bible calls sin, obeying the devil instead of obeying God, we wound people. And that wound opens a door for a spirit of rejection. So everybody deals with rejection at some level. Some people much more than others. If you've been raped, if your parents were divorced, if you were sexually molested, you're going to have an increased um, an increased awareness of rejection. You're going to have multiple spirits that come in that cause you to feel rejected at all times. Uh, and so um, rejection is huge. Um, and rejection is the right hook uh, I think the spirit of religion for many people is the left hook. So why are we susceptible to the spirit of religion? He, you know, Jesus said, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So if we know Jesus, we should know the truth. We should be walking in freedom. So why do we fall into uh, lies of religion? And that goes back to uh, rejection, which is why I say religion is one of the most dangerous spirits for Christians, but rejection is one of the most uh, dangerous spirits for all of human beings because it is the, um, it's the one thing that really motivates us uh, for everything, that we want to be loved, we want to be accepted, um, and uh, rejection tells us that we aren't loved, that we aren't accepted. So Jesus says, I love you, I accept you, I died for you. Um, we come into his kingdom, we celebrate that, we get baptized, we rejoice in that, um, and then the devil comes in with this lie that says, uh, well, yes, God uh, saved you by his grace, but that doesn't mean you can live however you want. And and we know, oh, that's, that's true. So, um, therefore, God loves me, but I need to perform well in order to maintain that love. That is the basic lie of the spirit of religion, is that he, he says, yes, God loves you, Jesus died for you, uh, God has grace, but... And that's where the lie comes in. Um, so uh, what is the basis of God's love for us? It is uh, twofold. First of all, 
you were made in the image of God. Um, the Bible says in, in Revelation 4 that it's because of his will that we exist and we're created. So you don't exist because it was your idea. At no point in your life did you approach God and say, hey, why don't you put me into creation? Why don't you invent me? That was never, that never happened. You have no consciousness of being uh, alive before you were alive. It was not your choice to exist. And it wasn't your choice, it wasn't your parents' choice that you exist either. They uh, may have had sex. That was probably not, uh, many times that is not done with the intention of having children. But even when it is done with the intention of having children, which that happens plenty of times too, it's the natural course of things, they cannot control, your parents could not control what child they would produce. They had no idea. Your existence is not your idea. Your existence is not your parents' idea. Your existence, the Bible says, is because of his will. It's because of God's will that you exist and were created. So many of us feel worthless because of the way uh, our parents treated us, um, because of their divorce, because of um, whatever. Uh, but we be- and we're believing that our value comes from our parents. Now our parents are put there. They're supposed to. Um, they're supposed to reinforce the value that God put there. But when they don't, a spirit of rejection comes in. Um, so the your value doesn't come from your parents, and it doesn't come from you. Your value comes from God, who said, "I want to make this person." It's because of His will that you exist and were created. So God saw all that he had made, as it says in Genesis 1, and it, he said it was a very good. So God saw you. He saw Sarah. He saw Evan. He saw Steve. Whatever your name is, God saw you, and he said, this is very good. This is a good idea. This human being, their existence is something I like, something I want, something I celebrate, something I value. So, Your value comes from the fact that God values you. What about the fact that we have all hurt other people, that we have done damaging things, that we have sinned, uh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? That glory of God is what was put in you from the very beginning, that God instilled himself in you, that and it was glorious that God called you to share in his rule and reign, which is part of God's glory. The glory of a king is his rule and reign, and God shared his glory with you. But all have sinned and fallen short of that glory. Um, and so what? What? where do I find value if I have defiled the very thing that was valuable, that God created this beautiful thing, and I destroyed it, and other people helped? You know, other people help. The problem is you help destroy other people. Other people help destroy you. So where does your value come from? Your value comes from the fact that Jesus died for you. And again, this was not your idea. When we read the book of Genesis, which is the foundation of the Bible, uh, and it's the foundation of our worldview, it's the foundation of our religion, of how we understand the world. It's the foundation of the truth that sets us free. Genesis tells us the story of Abraham, whom God approaches and says, in you and in your family, I am going to bless all nations. The Bible says that Abraham believed what God said, and it was considered to him as covenant faithfulness or justice, that because he believed God, he entered into this covenant, and Abraham would benefit from it because he believed God. So Abraham does not approach God. This is really important. And you can read these stories in Genesis 12, 15, and 17. God approaches Abraham and says, I am going to do this thing. I am going to rescue the human race. I am going to rescue the creation project that I started, that I said is good. It It got damaged by the entrance of sin and by humans' cooperation with that sin, but I am going to rescue it. So again, it wasn't your idea to exist. It wasn't your idea. Um, It was God's, and that's where your value comes from. But even the rescue, okay, you're damaged because of sin, but the rescue of you was not your idea. You didn't come to God and say, hey, God, I'm in a lot of pain. Um, Here's an idea of how to save me. Here's an idea of how to fix me. God came to Abraham. God came to the human being 
and said, I am going to do this thing. I am going to save the world through your family. And that came true in the person of Jesus, that Jesus was Abraham's descendant through whom God reconciled the world to himself because all of the rejection that we experienced, all the, all the abuse that we've experienced, all the curses that were put upon us, and when your parents get divorced, that is a curse. That is a curse of rejection. That is a curse of abandonment. You know, when someone molests you, that is a curse. That's a curse of worthlessness. That's a curse of saying, you're only here to serve my base needs, regardless of how it happened, what how it affects you. You're just here for me to wipe my feet on and to throw away. These are curses. Some of us have been cursed with words where someone said, you are such an idiot, or you will never fail. Uh, I mean, you will always fail, something like that. They have put a curse on us. The Bible says that Jesus became a curse for us. This is in Galatians, uh, that the book of Galatians, which actually is all about uh, the spirit of religion, if you read the book of Galatians. But uh It says that Jesus became a curse for us so that every curse laid upon us, all of it could be put on Jesus. So God promised through Abraham that through his family, he was going to fix what went wrong in the world. Again, this is God's idea, not Abraham's. God says, I'm going to do this. He did it in Jesus. He put all of our curses, all of our sins, all of our brokenness on Jesus and destroyed its power on the cross and through the resurrection of Jesus. It's, it was on purpose that Jesus was humiliated, Jesus was mocked, Jesus was rejected, Jesus was spit upon, Jesus was whipped and had his back shredded to pieces with what they call the cat of nine tails, which is a whip that has sharp pieces of glass and uh, sharp objects on the end of it so that it hooks into the flesh of whoever's being whipped. And it as the person pulls the whip back, it peels the skin back. That was what was done to Jesus when he was whipped before he was crucified with nails, nailed into his hands and his feet, naked, hung up to dry, humiliated uh, in front of the world, molested. You know, many people, you know, when they're sexually molested, they feel like, how could uh, God allow this to happen to me? Well, God allowed it to happen to Jesus so that it could be taken off of you. Jesus was sexually molested on the cross. It's, it is a, uh, a violation. It is an abuse to, to expose someone to the world. Jesus was exposed to the world in all humiliation, hung to suffocate to death, naked and bleeding on a cross because all of the curses, all of the judgments, all of the wrongs done to the human race and done by the human race was laid upon Jesus. And this was done because it was God's idea. God wanted to rescue you. So your value comes from the fact that God created you in his image, said you are very good, and then considered suffering and dying on your behalf to be worth it, that he would take all the punishment on himself. And when he laid these things on Jesus, he was laying it upon himself because Jesus and God are one and the same. Jesus bore your sin. God the Father, through his son Jesus, bore your sin on the cross, your rejection on the cross, so that you could be set free. So the, uh, the foundational truth of your acceptance is that God accepts you because he wants to accept you, because he paid for you. His love for you is not based upon what you have done or what you haven't done. It's based upon the fact that he wants to love you. So, does holiness matter? Because this is what the, the lie that the spirit of religion will tell us. is like, well, that's great. Yes, God loves you even though you're a sinner. God died for you even though uh, he paid for your sin, so you don't have to pay for your sin. Um, so on one hand, we might hear, okay, so now you can live however you want. Um, and on the other hand, we hear the spirit of religion saying, well, we can't let people just think that they're going to live however they want. Therefore, we must impose these rules on them. Yes, you're saved by grace, but dot, dot, dot. So there are two different things at work here, and we need to be clear about what we're talking about. The one issue is 
am I loved by God? And the answer to that is yes. If you have raped a thousand people, if you have murdered a thousand people, if you killed your own baby in an abortion, you are loved by God. If you are the most heinous person on the planet, if you have trafficked children, if you have been part of satanic ritual abuse where you have abused other people, God loves you, period. That is good news. God loves you not because of what you have done or haven't done. God loves you because when he created you, he gave you value. When he died for you, he confirmed that value and he rescued you and he paid for those sins. So yes, God loves you as you are right now, period. No question. So God's acceptance of you is based upon his own will that he wants to accept you. He decided to accept you and he does accept you as having uh, inherent value, value that he put there. So does God accept you in spite of your sin? Absolutely. But are you free from sin? That is another question. That's where holiness comes into play. And salvation, yes, is deliverance from sin. People can say all day long that I'm saved, but if you're living in sin, what have you been saved from? We have made it Uh, the same question. When we say, uh, I'm saved, what we're trying to say is God loves me. That is true. God loves you. But God God can love you all day long and you aren't saved because you haven't been delivered from the power of sin. And the power of sin comes through lies, the lies Jesus paid for. But if you are not willing to let Jesus pay for your sins, you will pay for them, not because he doesn't love you, but because you refuse to to let him pay for your sin, or you refuse to allow his shed blood to be applied to your sin. He has actually already paid for it. People who suffer under their sin are people who um, insist that they pay for their sins, which they cannot do. So therefore, they just get tortured forever and ever. That is what hell is, is that we refuse to allow the shed blood of Jesus to be applied to our sin, And so we insist on paying for it. But since we can't afford that, we simply go into debt that we can, we always take out more debt to pay our debt. And everyone knows you can't get out of that hole. That is eternal punishment. So God can love you. Uh, Jesus loves you. He does love you. And you can still be in bondage to sin. And this is still true for Christians, which is how we get uh, dragged in to the spirit of religion, because God doesn't look at us like, oh, do they call themselves Christians or not? That's not what what he does. God looks at us as people he loves, period. Whether you call yourself a Christian, or if you call yourself a Buddhist, or if you call yourself a Muslim, or if you call yourself uh, they, them, he loves you, period. He looks at you, and he loves you. But that doesn't mean that you're free. That doesn't mean that you're saved. Um, and the, the only way that you get free is through the truth and accepting the truth and rejecting the lie. So the spirit of religion is how the devil recaptures Christians who have believed the truth about God's love for them. But then this lie came in right behind that and said, yes, but you must do, you must wear this head covering. Your skirt must be this long. You must uh, always read your Bible, um, you know, 15 minutes a day or God doesn't love you. That's that's the kind of unspoken word, but the one that we receive is that if I don't do these things, God doesn't love me. But that is the lie. And again, I know I've said this already a, g- a bunch of times just in this podcast. Period, God loves you. I should say period after that, but God loves you, period. And that will not change. It does not change. You should not read your Bible, cover your head, or wear a uh, long skirts, or not listen to secular music in order to make God love you. That is a waste of time. That is useless energy, and that is going to be frustrating because no matter how much you do, you're going to still feel like you're not good enough. But if you want to be free, you need to read your Bible. You need to walk in a righteous life. You need to have good morality. You need to do the right thing because Doing the right thing is walking in the truth. James said, and the scripture that I quoted earlier, 
from James 127, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is not a message about how we acquire God's love. This is a message about how we walk in freedom because pure and undefiled religion is a pure and undefiled worldview. When we see the world the way it truly is, we will walk in liberty. When we see it and accept it, when we see and understand that we are not, um, you know, I'm not a Christian because I'm a good person. I am becoming a good person because I'm a Christian. I realize that God loved me, and when I walk as if I am loved by God, I can walk in grace for myself and for other people. The reason we sin is because we don't believe God loves us. Every sin that you have ever committed was done because you didn't believe that God loved you. You went to those drugs because you were depressed. You went to those drugs to escape a reality that you felt was hopeless. You felt rejected. You felt unloved. But the truth was, God didn't reject you, and God did love you. But you went to drugs to escape the lie, and that was another lie in itself. That was a lie, that a pact that you made with the devil, that uh, these drugs said, I will give you escape and you will be free. And it gave you escape, and it was temp- but it was temporary. And then he came back and slammed the door on you and you were stuck, still feeling now even worse because now you're a slave to a substance that is not your own will. You're, not, you're, no, you're no longer in control of your own will. You're now a slave of this addiction. And it might be it might be a sexual addiction. It might be addiction to relationships. Um, it could be anything other than the truth. The truth is the pure and undefiled religion. Um, and we want pure and undefiled religion not so that we can be accepted by God, but so that we can walk in the truth. And Christians, just like anybody else, are easily uh, tricked into believing that God uh, loves them because they do or don't do certain things. And once we establish that God loves us, period, we are free then to respond to that love uh, as a matter of, I want to walk in the truth, um, and I've already established the fact that God loves me. So now if God loves me, um, it's not true that I'm rejected because God didn't reject me. If if I walk in the, if I accept that God loves me, I know that He's there for me because someone who loves me will not abandon me and will not forsake me. And Jesus said those very things. He said, "I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you." And if we believe that, we will walk in liberty. We will walk in truth. And again, uh, you know that comes down to worldview, believing that Jesus will, that He's there, that He died for you that he rose up from the grave, and that he will never leave you or forsake you is a matter of faith. It's a matter of religion. It's a matter of worldview. If you believe it, you will walk in the truth, and you will walk in liberty, and you will know you're in in the truth because you are walking in liberty. So, um, you know, if you are uh, bound up today, you know, if you are dealing with, and, and these are some of the uh, signs of a spirit of religion. You have no joy. You uh, feel condemnation all the time. You always feel like you're not good enough, no matter how hard you try, uh, no matter what rules you keep, no matter what disciplines you have. You are all you're restless because you're always trying to do something more. You're judging others. You have fear, guilt, and shame. You struggle with legalism. Um, with like you're maybe someone brought up. Uh, the Sabbath. You need like, well, you know, the Bible, uh, the the Jews actually observed the Sabbath on Saturday, and that means also that uh, they didn't do any work on that day, and, and you're, you're thinking, oh, maybe I need to do that to be a real Christian. Um, and what's really motivating you there is not freedom. What's motivating you there is keeping God's love. And so legalism is a sign that you're under a spirit of religion. Pride sensitivity, and easily being offended when other people threaten you, when you feel like someone else is um, holier than you and it makes you mad, when you feel like someone else is, when someone's competing with you and it makes you mad and you're trying to defeat them, you're trying to prove that you belong, 
that they're not better than you, that is a sign that there is both rejection and the spirit of religion there. And I'm talking to Christians on this point, that you as a Christian, you feel threatened by other Christians. You feel threatened by other people's accomplishments. That is a sign of both rejection and religion, a spirit of false religion that is telling you your value is coming from uh, your performance. And again, performance is not how we get God's approval. Performance is not how we get uh, God's love. It's how we get freedom. And yes, in freedom, there's something we call blessing, God's blessing and God's favor, that God blesses uh, those who walk in the truth. God blesses, he favors those who walk in holiness, but not because he loves them more, but because he's already blessed himself. Holiness is God's own character. Um, you know, uh, walking in the truth is walking in God himself. God is blessed. God is all blessing. God blesses himself. Everything about the truth is already blessed. So yes, if you walk in the truth, if you walk in holiness, you will be blessed. You will have the favor of God, but not because God loves you more, but because God loves the truth. God loves, uh, and he has blessed already the truth. So if you're struggling with a spirit of religion, or a spirit of rejection today, it's because you you have misplaced where your value comes from. Just know right now and accept that God loves you, that Jesus died for you. And if you have never accepted that before, just say right now, Jesus, thank you for, for loving me, even though I don't deserve it. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for, for taking my curses, the things that were done to me. Thank you for taking those on to yourself. Thank you for being hung naked on a cross for me to take away my shame. Thank you for dying for the things that I did wrong, the things that I'm ashamed of. Thank you for dying because for my abortions. Thank you for dying for my cursing. Thank you for dying for my adultery, my fornication, my stealing, my killing, my perversion. Thank you for, for dying for me and taking all those things for me. I receive your love. And I thank you for valuing me, even though I didn't value myself. So just receive that. And then what Jesus wants wants you to do next is to come be baptized with him. That Jesus died on your behalf and he wants you to uh, let go of the identity that you have held on to up up to this point. You You found value in your work. You found value in your friends. You found value in your status. You found value in your sexual identity. You you tried to find value in pleasure. All of these things were where you tried to find your full identity. And Jesus says, if you want to be free, come with me into the river. I want you to symbolically die with me. I, w- I want your identity, uh, your false identity, to die. And I want you to be raised up and realize that your value comes from being in my house, in my love, Jesus says, that your value comes from knowing me and being with me and accepting my love. I'm the one who created you. I'm the one who came up with the idea of your existence. I'm the one who died for you. I'm the one who gives you value. Trust me. Believe in me. Receive my love, and you won't be bound to a spirit of legalism, to a spirit of religion. You won't be bound to a spirit of rejection that causes you to do all sorts of damaging things to yourself, to your body, to your relationships. You will walk in liberty because you will know me, Jesus, the truth, and the truth will set you free. This is what Jesus is saying to you right now. He wants to set you free. He wants to save you. The world is hurting right now, which is why There are so many people trying crazy things, trying to find satisfaction, modifying their bodies in permanent and permanently damaging ways, except for the grace of God, because Jesus heals. Amen. In In the mighty name of Jesus. But outside of Jesus, you have damaged yourself in permanent ways. Um, you know, abortion is permanent, uh, except in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. And so if you, Uh, If that's you today, you just need to repent of believing the lies that you are rejected. You need to repent of believing uh, that you need to earn God's love. You need to repent uh, of believing that 
um, God is punishing you and that he's angry at you because God has punished Jesus. Uh, and he t- took out his anger, or oh, I shouldn't say on Jesus, but on sin through Jesus. And, and you don't need to pay for it anymore. God is not angry at you. He He has paid for you. He wants to receive you into himself so you can be free from rejection. And for those of you who are struggling today with the spirit of religion, that you follow Jesus, but for some reason you walk in condemnation, it's because you've believed the lie that God values you because of how well you perform as a Christian. And you're reading your Bible for the wrong reasons. You're reading your Bible to prove how good you are. You're reading your Bible to prove that you're a good Christian uh, or to keep God's love. And so you're wasting your time and you're not getting much out of your Bible reading. You need to read your Bible so that you can know the truth and the truth will cause you to walk in liberty. So you need to repent of doing the right thing for the wrong reason. And now do it for the right reason. Do it because reading the Bible is going to help you know the truth. Worship because worshiping will help you know the truth. Pray because praying will help you become conformed to the truth. Do it for the right reason and you will walk in liberty. So Lord, right now I just pray in the name of Jesus for every person who is listening to this and they know they've been struggling with a spirit of religion. They know they've been struggling with a spirit of rejection. And these things have also opened the door to addictions, to secret sins. And so if that's you right now, just renounce it, whatever you're into, maybe even witchcraft. Some of you trying to get healing, turning to energy healing, uh, turning to yoga, uh, even turning to a fortune teller because you're anxious about the future. Repent of it right now. Confess it to Jesus. Say, I have done this. I've, I've gone to fortune tellers. I've tried yoga. Um, I smoked a little pot. Um, I had uh, I, I, I dabbled in some sexual stuff, trying to find relief, trying to find some pleasure, trying to find some love, some acceptance. And it was all because I didn't believe, Jesus, that you loved me. And I did believe that you rejected me. And I just confess that to you right now. I repent of that. I repent of that. I repent of every idol that I went to that was not Jesus. I went to some things for pleasure. I went to some things to escape the pain. Uh, that were not Jesus, and I repent of that right now. So whatever it is, just renounce it. Say, I renounce it, Uh, whatever it is, in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I command every demon under, under the sound of my voice that came into somebody's life because they believed a lie, but that lie has now been renounced, I command you to come up and out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of perversion, every spirit of addiction, Every spirit of rejection come all the way up and all the way out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You have no right and no portion in this person's life. You are a liar and a thief. You came in through a lie, but you're going out with the truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to come all the way up and all the way out to leave this person's life, to leave their mind, to leave their body, to get out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You have no right and no portion here. I command the spirit of religion to expose itself, and to come all the way up and all the way out right now. I bind your lies together. I expose your lies with the light of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you would reveal to every person watching and listening right now the places in their heart where they believe their value comes from, but it's a lie. They think that uh, their great physical accomplishments are giving them value. They think that their job is giving them value. Uh, they think that their looks are giving them value. They think that their the approval of their spouse is where their value comes from. I just declare to you right now that is a lie, and it's stealing from you. It's stealing your joy. It's stealing your, your peace. It's stealing your satisfaction. It gives you a momentary high when someone compliments you or applauds you, and then it disappears, and you again feel, I'm not good enough. Because your value doesn't come from those things. It comes from Jesus. So repent of it right now. And I just declare to you that you will be free as you repent and you receive the love of God. For those of you who have never known Jesus, you will know him right now. Just say, I receive you, Jesus. I receive your, your love for me. I receive your sacrifice for me. Make me new. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. If that's you, leave a comment below. You need to be baptized. You need to be discipled. I will take some time to talk with you over the phone. We can pray, um, and you will walk in liberty like you have never known. Jesus is still setting the captives free. Even Christians are still being set free. 
And I hope that you have received that today. So many Christians are walking in bondage, and that is not your inheritance. Your inheritance is freedom. Your inheritance is fullness. Your inheritance is richness and joy in relationships and in all that you do. You need to be free of some curses today. If you need prayer for any of these things, if you are uh, struggling with some kind of addiction, uh, if you need deliverance, if you know you're, you're struggling with nightmares, with suicidal thoughts, um, with heaviness, uh, even as a Christian, you just can't shake, leave a note in the comments or reach out to me on my website. We're going to pray together. Jesus is setting the captives free, um, and I want to be a part of your freedom, your part, a part of your deliverance. Um, so don't be shy. Reach out to me. If this has blessed you in some way, be sure to like it, to subscribe, hit the bell so that you can know when other videos come and share it with someone who needs it. Get the word out. Your part in evangelism today is sharing this with someone who needs to hear it. God bless you guys. I look forward to being with you again. Um, and again, yeah, if this has blessed you in any way, let me know in the comments below. God bless you. We'll see you next time.